In the autumn of 1979, meteorologists monitoring the Pacific Ocean began to notice the early signs of what would become one of the most powerful tropical cyclones in recorded history. It all started with a tropical disturbance near the Marshall Islands. At first, it seemed unremarkable, a cluster of thunderstorms brewing in warm ocean waters. But as the system began to organize, meteorologists could see it was no ordinary storm. The warm waters of the Pacific Ocean, combined with favorable atmospheric conditions, provided the perfect environment for the disturbance to develop. Sea surface temperatures in the region were unusually high, exceeding 80 degrees Fahrenheit, creating a vast reservoir of energy. At the same time, low wind shear, a condition where winds at different altitudes are not drastically different in speed or direction, allowed the storm to maintain its structure and grow rapidly. As the storm gathered strength, the Japan Meteorological Agency officially classified it as a tropical depression on October 8, 1979. By October 9th, it had intensified into a tropical storm, earning the name Tip. Over the next few days, Tip's growth was extraordinary. It transformed from a modest tropical storm into a full-fledged typhoon, its spiraling bands of clouds stretching farther and farther across the ocean. By October 11th, Tip reached the status of a super typhoon. At its peak, the storm boasted winds of over 190 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 870 millibars, the lowest ever recorded for a tropical cyclone. These figures alone make Typhoon Tip a meteorological marvel, but the storm's size was equally astonishing. At its largest, Tip's circulation spanned over 1,380 miles in diameter, making it the widest tropical cyclone ever documented. The immense size and power of Tip were not just theoretical measurements, they represented a serious threat to anyone in its path. Meteorologists faced the daunting challenge of predicting where the storm would go and how intense it would become. In an era without modern sa satellite imagery or advanced computer modeling, this task was as much an art as it was a science. Using weather balloons, aircraft reconnaissance, and early satellite data, they worked tirelessly to track TIP's progress. By mid-October, TIP had become a storm that defied imagination. Its enormous eye, a calm, eerily clear area at the center of the storm, measured over 20 miles across, surrounded by towering walls of clouds where the most violent winds and heaviest rains churned. This was the calm before the chaos, as the typhoon approached areas where its impact would be felt most acutely. Communities across the Western Pacific scrambled to prepare. In Japan and nearby islands like Guam, or Dredra authorities issued evacuation orders, closed schools and businesses, and braced for the storm's arrival. People boarded up windows, secured their belongings and sought refuge in designated shelters. Despite the best efforts of forecasters and officials, the sheer scale of TIP's power made it impossible to predict the exact extent of the destruction that lay ahead. Part one of this journey into Typhoon TIP's history ends here. With the storm at its peak intensity and a sense of unease hanging heavy over the Pacific, the next part will delve deeper into TIP's path and the impact of this colossal storm on the people and places in its way. As Typhoon Tip reached its peak intensity in mid-October of 1979, its immense size and power set it apart from any storm in recorded history. With its towering clouds, vast wind field, and record-breaking low pressure, Tip became a force of nature that demanded respect and fear. The storm's trajectory was closely monitored as forecasters worked tirelessly to predict its path and issue timely warnings to the regions at risk. Tip began its journey westward across the Pacific, its spiraling arms stretching out over 1,380 miles. The storm churned through open waters, gathering moisture and energy from the warm ocean surface. While the storm's eye remained a quiet center of calm, the surrounding eyewall was a region of unrelenting chaos. Wind speeds soared to over 190 miles per hour, accompanied by torrential rains that poured down in sheets obscuring visibility and creating treacherous conditions for ships at sea. As the storm moved closer to land, the Japanese island of Guam found itself in Tip's vast outer reach. Although the island was spared a direct hit, it still faced strong winds, heavy rains, and rising seas. Coastal areas were inundated by storm surges, forcing evacuations and leaving residents grappling with power outages and flooded homes. Fishermen scrambled to secure their boats and emergency responders worked around the clock to protect lives and property. While Guam experienced only a glancing blow, Japan's southern islands braced for the storm's full impact. 
typhoon tip shifted slightly northeast, sparing the most populated regions a direct hit, but still unleashing its fury on the Ryukyu Islands. Strong winds tore through towns, toppling trees and power lines, while torrential rains caused landslides that buried roads and threatened entire villages. At the same time, the storm's massive circulation caused ripple effects far beyond its immediate path. In the Philippines, hundreds of miles away, heavy rains brought by Tip's outer bands triggered flash floods and displaced thousands of families. The storm's sheer size meant that even areas not directly in its path felt its influence, underscoring the far-reaching impact of such a powerful system. Tip's eventual landfall came on October 19, 1979, in Japan's Shikoku region. By this point, the storm had weakened slightly from its record-setting peak, but it remained a formidable typhoon, with winds exceeding 120 miles per hour. Coastal towns bore the brunt of the storm surge, which swallowed entire stretches of shoreline, destroying homes and businesses in its wake. Farther inland, rivers swelled beyond their banks, inundating fields and towns and forcing thousands of residents to flee to higher ground. Throughout the chaos, stories of survival and resilience emerged. Families huddled together in shelters, clinging to hope as the storm raged outside. Emergency services worked tirelessly to rescue stranded residents, wading through floodwaters and navigating debris-strewn streets. The storm's impact on infrastructure was severe, with countless buildings reduced to rubble, roads rendered impassable, and communication networks disrupted. As Tip moved inland and began to lose strength, it left behind a trail of destruction that stretched for hundreds of miles. In the storm's wake, survivors emerged to assess the damage and begin the long process of recovery. Yet even as the winds died down and the rain subsided, the true scale of the disaster was only beginning to become clear. Next, we will explore the aftermath of Typhoon Tip, delving into the human toll, the challenges faced by those left in its path, and the lessons learned from this unprecedented storm. When Typhoon Tip finally dissipated in late October of 1979, the devastation left behind was staggering. Entire communities were unrecognizable, transformed by the relentless winds, rain, and storm surges that had accompanied the storm's passage. For the people who had endured its wrath, the aftermath was a time of reckoning, survival, and rebuilding. In Japan, the storm's impacts were most severe in the Shikoku and Honshu regions. Entire neighborhoods had been submerged by flooding, with homes and businesses reduced to soggy ruins. Farmlands, which were the lifeblood for many communities, were devastated as rivers overflowed, carrying away crops and livestock. Coastal towns suffered extensive damage, with fishing fleets destroyed and ports rendered unusable. One of the most immediate concerns was the displacement of thousands of residents, shelters quickly filled with families seeking refuge, many of whom had lost everything. In the days following the storm, emergency response teams worked tirelessly to deliver food, clean water, and medical aid to the affected areas. However, the sheer scale of the disaster made it a daunting task. Roads were blocked by landslides and debris, making it difficult for supplies to reach remote locations. The human toll of the storm was deeply felt. Dozens of lives were lost, and many more were injured. Hospitals were overwhelmed with patients suffering from storm-related injuries, and there was a growing concern about the spread of waterborne diseases due to the contaminated floodwaters. Volunteers and aid organizations rallied to support those in need, but the emotional scars of the disaster were evident in every survivor's story. <laughs> Beyond the immediate challenges, the long-term effects of TIP were profound. Infrastructure across the region was severely damaged, with roads, bridges, and power lines needing extensive repairs. In some areas, it took weeks or even months to restore electricity and clean water. Schools and public buildings that had been used as evacuation centers required significant renovations before they could reopen. Environmental damage was another pressing issue. Forests along the typhoon's path were left in shambles, with uprooted trees scattered like matchsticks. Coastal erosion altered the landscape, and the storm's intense rainfall led to soil destabilization, increasing the risk of future landslides. Efforts to clean up and repair the damage required coordination between local governments national agencies, and international aid organizations. As the recovery unfolded, stories of resilience and solidarity emerged. Communities banded together to clear debris, rebuild homes, and support one another through the hardships. Local leaders organized fundraisers and donation drives, while neighboring regions sent resources and manpower to assist in the recovery efforts. 
Despite the immense challenges, there was a collective determination to overcome the disaster and restore a sense of normalcy. In the months that followed, meteorologists and scientists analyzed Typhoon, TIP's unprecedented strength and impact. Its record-breaking size and intensity highlighted the need for improved forecasting technology and disaster preparedness. Governments across the Pacific region began reassessing their emergency response strategies, seeking to learn from TIP's devastating lessons to better protect their citizens in the future. As we wrap up, we will reflect on the legacy of Typhoon TIP, examining how it changed our understanding of tropical cyclones and the ongoing quest to predict and mitigate such powerful forces of nature. Typhoon. TIP's story did not end when its winds subsided or the floodwaters receded. Instead, the storm left an enduring legacy, one that reshaped our understanding of tropical cyclones and the ways we prepare for natural disasters. In the decades since TIP's unprecedented arrival in 1979, its lessons have influenced meteorology, disaster management, and public awareness in profound ways. One of the most significant impacts of Typhoon TIP was its contribution to meteorological science. At the time, the storm's size and intensity were unparalleled, pushing scientists to study its unique characteristics. Researchers examined how TIP's interaction with warm ocean waters and atmospheric conditions created the perfect environment for such a colossal storm to form. This research not only deepened our understanding of typhoon dynamics, but also helped improve predictive models, enabling forecasters to anticipate storm behavior with greater accuracy. TIP also highlighted the importance of advancements in storm monitoring technology. In the late 1970s, satellite imagery was still in its early stages, and weather data collection relied heavily on reconnaissance aircraft and surface observations. The challenges of tracking TIP underscored the need for more robust satellite systems, which have since become essential tools in monitoring tropical cyclones worldwide. Today, meteorologists can track storms in real time, providing earlier warnings and saving countless lives. On a societal level, TIP served as a wake-up call for disaster preparedness. Communities and governments across the Pacific Basin recognized the critical importance of early warning systems, evacuation protocols, and infrastructure resilience. In Japan, where the storm's impact was most severe, efforts were made to strengthen coastal defenses, improve flood management systems, and educate the public on how to respond to typhoons. These measures have undoubtedly reduced the toll of subsequent storms in the region. The human stories of Typhoon Tip, of loss, resilience, and recovery, also played a pivotal role in fostering a deeper appreciation for the power of nature. Survivors' accounts of the storm's fury and its aftermath served as a stark reminder of the vulnerability of coastal communities. These narratives helped galvanize support for stronger disaster response programs and greater investment in community preparedness. Globally, TIP's record-breaking intensity became a benchmark in the study of tropical cyclones. The storm's name remains synonymous with extreme weather, and its place in history has influenced how we perceive and respond to similar events. It also spurred international collaboration among scientists, governments, and organizations working together to mitigate the impacts of future storms. While Typhoon Tip was a natural disaster of immense destruction, its legacy is also one of progress and resilience. The storm's unprecedented power challenged humanity to rise to the occasion, to learn from the devastation, and to build a future where we are better equipped to face the forces of nature. The advancements in meteorology, disaster management, and community preparedness that followed in Tip's wake stand as a testament to our ability to adapt and endure. As we reflect on the history of Typhoon Tip, we are reminded of the duality of nature's beauty and its potential for destruction. It is a call to action to respect the environment, prepare for the unpredictable, and remain steadfast in the face of adversity. Typhoon. Tip may have been a storm of the past, but its lessons are timeless, serving as a guide for navigating the storms of the future.